This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. kids doing up here in the attic? Comet it went off. There's nothing to watch. <laughs> Come, Nitch. Everything's 3D Hollywood today. I remember back when I was your age, we used to use the old TV sets. No satellite hookups or anything. Just two of signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Uh, some are even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that enforced colorization law through in the 20s. Those shows must have been really boring. They weren't even interactive. Uh, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. I mean, look at this. Mm. Ooh, what's, what's that? Oh, it's called a VCR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the comm net, people used to tape shows. Let me see. Uh, uh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation. <laughs> Come back with us to the 60s and 70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded and formed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbar, along with Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley. We're here to talk about 60s and 70s television. And tonight, it's War Comedy! <laughs> All right. Yes, War Comedy's tonight on Vast Wasteland. Uh, and before we run right into all the exciting uh, stuff we've got on, we just want to give you a couple notes. Uh, first off, uh, uh, we're now on a regular schedule. This is our second show of our regular season here. And uh, our schedule, of course, is uh, Tuesdays. We're on at uh, 6 p.m., Wednesdays at 10 p.m., and Thursdays at 3 p.m. And if for some reason you actually want to write in the Vast Wasteland, I don't know why, but if you would, you want to write into Box 151526, Columbus, Ohio, 43215, care of Fast Wasteland. All right, and now, on to Wilbert with his first point for the evening. Well, by golly, during the um, 60s especially, I guess there were probably more war programs than there were in the 70s because we had things like, oh gosh, we had combat, we had the Rap Patrol, we had Garrison's Gorillas. Remember any of these shows? They were really on. They weren't funny. That's true. Those weren't funny. Those these were the serious shows. But um, I have the first war comedy as McHale's Navy in 1962. Okay. Well, I, I have to I have to debate that. But the, the, this is this is this has got to have definitely a uh, asterisk beside it because it technically is not a 60s show. The Phil Silver show, you'll never get rich. Sergeant Bilko. Oh, ah. Sergeant Bilko. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, we would have seen it in reruns, maybe. Right. 
but I didn't. Okay. Well. So Mikhail's maybe like the first one mm -hmm. for me. That's that that would be next one. Which just like set off a rash of let's see Gomer Pyle and started in '64, Hogan's Heroes '65, F Troop in '65. Right. Uh, we've got. Uh, what uh, else? There's one in there. Uh, we have uh, no time for sergeants. This oh was gosh, a. I now this was a. Uh, uh, technically, pretty much uh, uh, a real ripoff by, uh, I'm trying to remember which that network showed play. it, because, well, it was a play, it was a and it was a movie, both starring Andy Griffith. And then, of course, Andy Griffith basically took the whole concept and made it into Gomer Pyle. And it's the same basic show, uh, you know, and, but uh, uh, this show is being shown on, a, uh, on another network opposite Andy Griffith on the schedule. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It was just this, basically a Gomer Pyle type ripoff because it, it started the same season as Gomer Pyle. And uh, it's, if you've ever seen Gomer Pyle, you've seen No Time for Sergeants. <laughs> it's the and same show. if you've show. ever seen Mikhail's <laughs> Navy, you've seen Sergeant Bilko. Well, there's a, mm. every once in a while there was actually a little bit of drama and they actually did something. <laughs> <laughs> and just, just hanging around the motor pole and ripping people off. <laughs> I actually did something with Mikhail's Navy once in a while. Now, now, now who got, I got, I remember when I was a kid, I got confused when Mikhail's Navy moved from the islands, from the Pacific, they moved to Italy. They moved to Italy, that's right. And I couldn't figure out what all the Japanese people turned into Italians. <laughs> well, they just, uh, I don't know, they decided, well, the ratings are starting to drop. Maybe we could try something to get the thing well, going. I was a little kid. <laughs> well, you went out, then you wouldn't be able to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, uh, we got uh, the uh, right off uh, again, the, the Phil Silver show, You'll Never Get Rich, uh, Sergeant Bilko. I had about eight different titles. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, uh, let's and keep changing course, the title. People will watch it to see a new show. <laughs> that started, it's actually started back in 55. Uh, but uh, it went on till 59, but I'm sure it was uh, on in reruns. In fact, I saw a reference to it like all the way into 63 on the regular schedule, back when the network actually showed reruns of old shows in their prime time. This is like before syndication. They're doing that again, Beauty and the Beast, CBS. Well, it's, that's not that, I mean. It's a rerun. Yeah, it's a rerun. From two, <laughs> right. two years ago. <laughs> so, uh, of course, it started uh, careers of such famous people as, uh, let's see, Joey Ross. <laughs> hey, remember him? <laughs> no, not really. And uh, I'm trying to remember some people, other people on there. And there were some like big time people on there. Wasn't uh, wasn't uh, Fred Gwynn on uh, Phil Silver's show at some point? Yeah, I think so. Gee. I, I, I don't see him on here, but I'm sure he was. Hmm. I'm absolutely sure he was. Maybe it was like a just a quick like a one, walk on, a one walk on kind yeah. of deal. But I'm sure, of course, Fred Gwynn later to become Urban Munster. But, yeah, and um, to go on Car 54, too, Car 54. probably around that time. Well, I found out something interesting with uh, Larry Hovis from Hogan's Heroes. Yes. Before he did Hogan's Heroes, he did the Gomer Pyle show as Larry. <laughs> on Hogan's Heroes, his name was Sergeant Carter. Well. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought it was interesting. That is. That's so the question is, is Sergeant Carter from Hogan's Heroes and Sergeant Carter from... Incarnation! <laughs> no, they're, they're related, because technically that was World War II. <laughs> Sergeant Carter came back after the war, had a kid, and he was actually Sergeant Carter from, uh, okay. from Hogan's Heroes. Uh, not uh, from uh, uh, Ho uh, Gomer Pyle. Oh, hey. <laughs> that, could, that could technically be, you know. There's uh, a concept. It's a little stretching it. Actually, a lot stretching it. but stretching yeah. it a lot, yeah. <laughs> But it could be. Anyways, uh, we're here to probe your mind. Right. We're here to make right. you think. That's right. It's a thought-provoking show. It's not it's just TV. It's an adventure. It's infotainment. <laughs> okay, so, so there was uh, You'll Never Get Rich, Phil Silver, Sergeant Milko, whatever. Uh, we had McHale's Navy, which we already did a couple things about. Uh, Tim Conway. Tim, and, and for the longest time, it was the only show we did that, that ran longer than 13 weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but... Uh, he was on or he was on McHale's Navy, and then everything he did after that ran 13 weeks until he hit Carol Burnett's show. Yep. And That's of course... A fact, Jack. As Captain Binghamton, the famous, the, the infamous Joe Flynn. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah. Nice, ladies. Drowned in a swimming pool. Was that Sergeant Carter from Gomer Pyle? Oh no, Sergeant Carter didn't drown in a swimming pool. Well, somebody did. Yes, it might have been. Yeah. But he guys, the Beach Boys. I don't. I don't think it was Natalie Wood. It could be anybody. She was a guest appearance. F Troop. Yeah. Wait a minute. We're we're just zipping through these here. We got Mikhail's Navy had a lot of people in it, including Gavin McLeod as Joseph 
Happy Haynes. Keep on for two years. <laughs> That's funny. Look, look at that. <laughs> he, he never. This guy never had hair. I don't think he ever had <laughs> he hair. He was born without hair. He is born bald. <laughs> by golly. <laughs> I don't know yeah, if we can. All, I don't know if we can any, see this or like, not, but he's. Well, he has. He is, never he, had hair. Our word for it. He has just the same amount of hair as he has today. And this was like Except thirty years ago. There. Yes, true. It is darker. It's darker there than it it's was much darker. Captain, Captain Stupid. It's Captain Stupid. Stooping. That's, That's right. Captain Whatever. Stupid. Captain Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! So we had. Oh, uh, uh, let's see. see. But it was a uh, just a very strange show. Uh, Due to the fact that they, they tried for a while to be uh, Sergeant Bilko, and then they tried for a while to be Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> I don't know what the deal was. Before Hogan was even out there. Right, exactly. So we had McHale's Navy, and then we did no time for Sergeants, which we already mentioned. And then we go on to Gomer Pyle, USMC. Go! Surprise, surprise, surprise. 1964 to 1970. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> How many years this show was on the air, considering Amazing. the incredibly low quality of the show. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. And Duke, his friend Duke, played by Ronnie Shell. <laughs> yes. Duke. 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 <laughs> Sergeant Duke. Carter. And they had girlfriends like Bunny and Miss Lou Bunny. Ann. <laughs> Lou Ann Poovy. <laughs> ah, gosh, what a show. But, what a show. And again, people just left and right. Larry Hovis, as we mentioned, yeah. playing Larry. <laughs> original name season. William Christopher, later to become Farm K on MASH. As Private Lester Hummel. <laughs> and of course, uh, also later to become uh, uh, Donald Hollinger. Don Donald Hollinger, <laughs> thank you. Ted Bessel. It's <laughs> Frankie Lombardi. <laughs> Only had <for> one season. <laughs> kind of hard to consider, kind of hard to consider uh, Ted Bessel as a hardcore uh, Italian somehow. Well, Frankie Lombardi. <laughs> kind of hard to consider Gomer Pyle as a hardcore leatherneck marine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. <laughs> had to, well, most of these shows, you pretty much had to stretch, yeah, stretch the old, uh, <laughs> break the old uh, rules of common sense. Okay, well, let's talk about F Troop. Because okay. it does qualify as a war comedy. Yes, even it certainly it does. Time. The oh, yeah. Well, there's a lot of the Civil time. War was here when, quite accidentally, <laughs> a hero of these Indians are were played speed. by non Native Americans. Right. Don Rickles as you gotta, an Indian. Yeah. <laughs> Milton Basically, Burrow anybody, as an Indian. Anybody who was hanging around the studio as an Indian. Uh, they just. Uh, I'm sure uh, a lot of the Native American tribes were probably like protesting this show most of the time. <laughs> it was, uh, it was uh, certainly, it certainly, was well, actually. Henry Gibson was on. He played the little character uh, Rongo. Rongo, let me get it. Rongo? Rongo Starr, the jinxed cavalryman. And when he was there, things went worse, even worse than they did when Yikes. Uh, Ken Berry was. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just bad all anyway. the time. <laughs> oh, my. So we had, uh, of course, the, the famous Larry Storch. Yeah. Larry Storch later to go on to... Um, cartoon what? Voices. Cartoon Voices. <laughs> well, Larry Storch and Forrest Tucker. Right, they, they both just kind of went into Saturday morning Stand type down. stuff. Well, sure. yeah, that's true. But Larry Storch and Forrest Tucker, I mean, they went on to be the first Ghostbusters. Yes, right? Yeah, the, oh yeah, the original, the original ones. Before the original the Ghostbusters, the, stuff. exactly. The Ghostbusters, that one. Yeah, yeah. With, the stuff, or with the stuffed gorilla, the fake gorilla. Right. The guy in the gorilla. Well, the guy in the gorilla suit was somebody famous, too, on that show. Yeah, he went Rick on. Rick Baker. It was Rick Baker. Because <laughs> Rick Baker did the best gorillas in, in TV and went on to movies. And by golly, he's still doing gorillas. Yeah. And gorilla, well, he's then, just Mr. Makeup. Well, we had, uh, incredible. Let's see. Biggest. Well, wait a minute. We have one more before we one go more. on to the biggest. Which one's that? The wackiest ship in the Army. <laughs> Ooh, hey. This was run about six months. No, this was run for this was well, this was back when uh, all shows never all shows went 26 weeks, even if it was a really bad show. So, yeah. uh, so uh, let's see. This was the wackiest ship. Now this was, I mean, this is a really lame premise. <laughs> yeah, here we go. The spring of '42, only months after the Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor, the government of New Zealand presented to the United States a, the Kiwi, a 70-year-old twin-masted schooner. Obsolete and badly in need of repairs, the ship was staffed with a token crew while the U.S. Navy tried to figure out what to do with it. This okay. Is, okay. But they found out it's really useful because it doesn't be, it can't be picked up on radar. It doesn't make noise, so sonar doesn't pick it up, so they can sneak into places. 
no one notices a schooner coming by, but... No, I didn't notice a ship. <laughs> hey, no. what's that schooner right doing over there? <laughs> ah, it's the oh, Kiwi. No. We it, don't have to worry about be, that. It couldn't be the U.S., no. <laughs> Never, ever. When would they go for something that cheap, huh? <laughs> so, uh, amazing, this was on for an entire season. Well, if you think but, about it, it, Hogan's Heroes was pretty far-fetched, too. Right. We're, we're, we're prisoners of war. And we're having a great time. <laughs> that was a great deal. We've got a French chef. We've got comedy. We've got a, they had a steam bath. Yeah. And the thing was, I always wondered, now this is why I thought Hogan's Heroes was dumb. Why didn't they just leave? <laughs> they did all they the were, time. They were, no, but they, they were, were under orders. They were invaluable exactly. spies. They were under orders by the Allies. They, they could do a, a, a million times more oh, good there. <laughs> well, why? Why? You're, say I'm dead. Hey. You're like. <laughs> Start a new life. It's a great deal. You know, it's like you, you're there. You get out with the Germans. You got this great life underground if you want to have it. <laughs> You know, you can just hang out down there, and LeBeau gives you French food, you know. Not for me. You got, you got Richard Hogan. Richard Dawson was on that show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he, he was didn't nuker. anybody there, though. No, well, at least not on the show. Not, not on the not show. Not publicly. About. Survey and says. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Uh, and you've got, that either. you've got Hogan, who's doing the the Captain Kirk thing. He's always sneaking out and going after the Fraulein's right. or <laughs> any other of the French exactly. resistance why people, would, anybody, you know. You know, why would uh, Hogan want to leave, you know, especially him, because it's like, if he went back well, to he Britain, made, he, yeah, it's like he'd have to compete with all the other British guys for all for, for all the babes. There, it's like, it's like a whole bunch of old German guys and him, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's prisoner of war. <laughs> exactly. It's like a great real, deal real for him. Bait right. There, yeah. <laughs> prisoner of war tie me up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just thought, why don't they just leave and just leave? <laughs> you got to figure that. I mean, they never explain this, but you almost have to figure that they that the Allies engineered getting Plank and Schultz at this camp. You know, <laughs> for real. Exactly. You know, because they probably, you know, it's like, like we really need. Stupid. You know, I, I really don't think. You know, I mean, again, this was not something that was ever spelled out. But it, in my opinion, it wasn't a situation where, well, they just happened to be there. Let's set them up for this. I think from day one, it's like you will parachute out here and, and you know, and lose your plane. <laughs> So you will go to this camp where we have got this guy, this idiot Clint guy that we've managed to engineer to get into running this camp, and you can do all this great stuff there, you know? Okay. Well, let's go on to the biggest one. <laughs> what I think is the biggest war comedy. Okay, sure. MASH. MASH. Oh, sure. Because it wasn't just funny, but I don't know. I liked it better than any of the others. Well, well see, you had more well, of a story here. Well, see, I, I to me, there there are two eras to it, and the era that's the good era, and the era that's the dumb era. And the era that's the dumb era appears the instant BJ shows up, right there. No, like, the whole the whole plot line just kind of like. But, but if you look at it, Mash kind of followed the way trends were going here. Oh yeah, because oh, it's exactly. Like, it's oh, like exactly. when Trapper and Hawkeye were together, they were just chasing all the nurses and everything. Here comes after Trapper leaves, goes back to his family. I wouldn't take him back. <laughs> <laughs> here comes BJ, who is like Mr. Faithful. Yes. And that's kind of like a trend that was going on. Supposedly in this Supposedly. country. Supposedly. <laughs> that's the idea. I heard about right. it, but I didn't actually experience it. <laughs> yeah, that's, but, uh, that's, yeah, that's the thing. It, 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 did, it did follow the, the mores and the values of the country as it went, but it just wasn't funny it, it afterwards. Uh, no, it, just, I, it the started funny. making a statement. It was really talking about, it really got away from Korea and kind of got into issues that were really related to Vietnam. Oh, sure. But still, and it just, you know, it's like... No, no, you're supposed to be a comedy. To me, this was the first show that really started the whole, well, all in the family in a way, but MASH started the idea of a very special episode of something, you know, where, okay. all right, we're funny, but we got to make a statement. The serial comedy. We then. have to be very, you know. The, the warmity. The, yeah, the warmity or the dramedy. <laughs> it's like, this, and this horrible this horrible stage of u.s uh, broadcasting i i just i just uh, winced at the whole concept it's like if i want to watch a drama i'll watch a drama if i want to watch a comedy i want to watch a comedy i don't want this it's like life if it's like life i don't want to watch it on dv exactly why <laughs> why watch life if you're gonna if, if you gonna live watch, life yeah, you watch tv to get away life. from that exactly. well, my life's a sitcom anyway <laughs> if, if i want to go live you know if enjoy life i'll go live life exactly 
Oh, well. So, but... Well, did you notice on MASH when McLean Stevenson's character, Henry, was killed, McLean Stevenson kind of died, too? Yeah. It's like the next time it's Hillary well, Larry, and they hung up Larry, on him, and, and that then, was uh, that. Yeah, his whole career he just was like, pre pretty much uh, belly flopped <laughs> after that. They, they did more than kill him on that show. <laughs> his career. And G.W. Bailey became a standard on MASH. He was Rizzo. Oh, yeah. He was the <laughs> gravel voice of... <laughs> Carpool sergeant mm -hmm. guy who's always sleeping under the cars, mm -hmm. finding a way to get out of things. But now he's popped up on St. Elsewhere movie. What he does those uh, police academies. police academy movies. <laughs> he really no, took it, off, yeah. eh? <laughs> okay, I've got one that Wilbert doesn't remember. I don't know if you remember it or not. I think I was the only person that watched this show for all few months that it lasted. It was called Rollout. Well, I can't, didn't say I didn't remember it. It's just I didn't watch it much. I, <laughs> I, I, I remember a reference to it, and that's about it. It had um, Garrett Morris on it. It had Garrett Morris. Wow. Hilly Hicks. I don't even remember this. I mean, guy? like I said, I remember a reference. Ed Begley Julian, Jr. was even in it. <laughs> it was about a motor company in France whose job was to get supplies to the front. They were running the same time as MASH, and I think they kind of meant to be sort of another MASH mm -hmm. with a mostly black cast. But it only like lasted a few months. So. Mm -hmm. You got Stu Gillum, Hilly Hicks, Mel Stewart, Val Bisoglio, Ed Begley Jr., Garrett Morris, Darrow Agus, Rod Guest, Theodore Wilson, Penny Stanton. My ah, goodness. That's it. Set in France during World War II, Rollout was the story of men in the 50 50th trucking company, the Red Ball Express, an army trucking unit that managed to get supplies through to the troops at the front despite any and all problems. Well, I watched and it was funny. Yeah. But, no, not a bit, but how long was it on? Not it was long. on from We're October to January oh. 1973 nope, to 74. Nope. <laughs> October 73 to December 73. Yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> January 74, well, just yeah. a little I while. Remember. Well, as we, as we know, uh, the length of how long a show on does not always uh, indicate how good the show was. In this some is cases, true. it means it was a really good show, too good for television, and so it was gone. Well, this was a good show. Okay. Not too good for TV. But I mean, you know, show. Garrett Morris went on to went on to Saturday night. Daryl Agus went on to Fridays. Fridays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, golly. The only show Ed in which Begley the two Jr. took went on to of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, late night uh, humor type television were both on the same show. Exactly. Okay. Well, then we go on to. CPO Sharky. Ah. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to end with CPO Sharky. <laughs> Well, let's see, the because uh, uh, CPO Sharky, this is basically, if you remember this, it was basically just a, a, uh, a uh, concept to stick Don Rickles in. And Don Rickles played himself as this guy. He ran around and uh, basically, basically well, just, people. yeah, well, that's, that's, his, uh, that's his act. He's just <laughs> mean and nasty to yeah, people. Yeah, that's, that's his act. He's, he's been successful for years being mean and nasty and rude to people. That, that must have been a show with a great lead in, because I remember watching it. Wasn't it a Friday night show, like near Chico I, and the Man or that's something? That's what I was going to say. Chico and the Man was around there somewhere. Of course, you know, I watched Chico Oh, yeah, and the you man. couldn't miss Chico and the Man. I love Chico. <laughs> so you got that. Uh, I'm looking through this. Uh, pretty much nobody that uh, I've... Uh, nope. Looking through it a second time, no. Nope. Well, it didn't help anybody's career, did it? Nobody's career whatsoever. I don't... Hey, David you. Landisberg. David, who was going to David Landisberg? CPO Sharky. David Landisberg. Well, you know him. He's, uh... No, I think you're thinking... You're thinking the wrong guy. I don't think... Oh, you're, I'm you're, thinking you're Steve think, Landisberg. I'm thinking Steve Landisberg. Oh, Dietrich never mind me. Miller. Yeah, okay. not the yeah, same guy. Because that was guy. actually going on the same Dietrich time. Dietrich was funny. Yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, I, I saw that myself and said, no, no, it's Steve, Steve Landisberg. Okay. Maybe his brother. I don't know. Well, so Richard we got that. Richard Beauchamp. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Richard Beauchamp. <laughs> who can <who laughs> <did> forget? <laughs> Richard <laughs> Beauchamp. <laughs> Richard Beauchamp. Well, that's a nice name. Yeah. Don't know who he is, but it sounds like a character on a soap opera, but it's a nice name. Right. Okay, then we go right on to Operation Petticoat. <laughs> this oh, was, hey. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> this was 77 to 79. Amazing how long this was on the air. I think they, from what I can see here, it they looks like they just they had a handsome man on little, little, little 
came on and off, little spurts every once in a while because they kept changing the concept, bringing it back in, kind of like kept bringing it in for repairs, rebuilt the whole show, sent it out again, went for a couple months, died, it died again, they brought it back in. Originally starring John Aston. Jamie Lee Curtis. And Jamie Lee Curtis was in it. Wasn't that one of her first big outings before she became and, a scream queen? And from, from what I saw in here, the reason Jamie Lee Curtis is in it is because the film version of Operation Petticoat starred Cary Grant and Tony Curtis. Okay. And that's the only reason she's in there, because then she was like the screamer in the... Uh, in the, uh, which one, the Halloween? The I Halloween forget. movie, well, the first two Halloween, Halloween movies. Yeah. She, she was the screamer in that. She had no other real career or anything. <laughs> Whoa! Look, Jim Varney's in here. Jim Varney. Oh, my goodness. Vern. Hey, Vern. <laughs> <laughs> know what I mean? Know what I mean, Vern? Know what I mean? Yeah, we forgot. Randolph <laughs> Mantooth. Joanne Flug. Yeah, <laughs> my Joanne gosh. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> That's true. She was even on MASH, I think. <laughs> I think sometimes she was. This is incredible. One of, the, one of the many nurses. They always had, they always had many nurses named Nurse Abel and Nurse Baker. Right. It's like standard nurse names. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, if you don't remember Operation Petticoat, the you're, not missing, you're not missing much. But let me just go through okay. it real quick. The uh, the deal is this uh, this uh, Navy submarine is uh, they they bring it in and it's given to this young commander and it's in horrible condition and so they're out there and they paint it with this pink undercoating in preparation to get it really completed, you know, to really paint it. However, there's, there's, a, there's a Jap attack and they gotta run out and, and defend in this pink submarine. And for some reason, I'm not really sure, I can't really see the Navy say, hey, this is a good idea, why don't you just leave it pink? So that's, that's the whole deal. It's a pink submarine going around the country, or go around, around the, the ocean. And, uh, they had, uh, and the other deal was they had Navy nurses on it. We're not sure why they'd be on a submarine other than this was the Fred Silverman era, but... Because it's a TV show. Right. <laughs> Man, it was just the emergency of the whole thing. They just got called out right away. Yeah. Ooh, no time they to sell stayed on there. Off. Yeah. <laughs> we can't be on there in the first place, though. They were Maybe they were taking a tour. The uh, three-hour yeah. tour. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, let's see. What else? Do we have any other shows? Uh, I, I really don't think there were any more. If there were, they just lasted that long. In or and it, out. Was, it was just too late. Like In and, um, out. We and, and some other, of course, we had some other people who uh, made some famous guest shots on other shows. We had from Hogan's Heroes, uh, Colonel Crittenden, also, of course, Dr. Bombay. <laughs> from ha! Twitch. Ha ha! <laughs> Samantha! Ha! Ha! <laughs> The same guy. Yeah. Incredible. And just as incompetent on both shows. <laughs> I think just incompetency like, was, his, was his was his trademark. <laughs> yeah. I play incompetent British guys on shows. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was in real life. <laughs> well, we don't know. Could have been. Bernard? Paul Lynn. Paul Lynn did F True. Oh, Paul, yeah, Paul Lynn did he, F True. He, he did a lot of shows. He did a lot of voices for cartoons. Sure, He's sure he did. Now. Yeah. But <laughs> too many things. The, he's dead now. Oh, Joe. He tried to do too many things. <laughs> he's dead well, now. They all died. Well, well that's what say? happens to people when they get old. But <laughs> <laughs> they were all my friends, but they died. <laughs> anyway. Oh my. Let's see. What else did we have? Well, um, darn it. Uh, I think we're we How much time do we got on this wonderful? Uh, oh, ooh. Just in time. We're He's just about ready to. We, yes. <laughs> just about ready to, to wrap this wonderful sucker up. Well, next uh, time, uh, two weeks from now, you'll be, uh, if you tune in at this exact same time, you'll see an exciting show on uh, cartoons. 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 We're not sure what kind of cartoons. Just cartoons. 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 There were lots of cartoons Dudes. during the 60s we're and gonna have, 70s. We're going to have a big lot of cartoon shows. You can expect that. And this, this will gonna, just be, this the first be the first one. We <laughs> love them. Anyway, so uh, that's uh, that's about all all we have. Uh, remember, we're on Tuesdays at six, Wednesdays at ten, Thursdays at three. We're just all over the place here, and you just can't get away from us. So for all of us here at Bass Wasteland, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Wasteland.